Welcome Haskellings! Since yesterday's solution I've been thinking about double negatives and De Morgan's theorem and we can greatly simplify part b of this solution by applying De Morgan's theorem on this condition here. So if we reverse the inner condition then we can also reverse the outer condition but we need to change the any to an all. I actually enjoyed yesterday's puzzle so much that I think that after Christmas I'm going to do it again by hand. Now today's puzzle is The Game of Life by Conway, except we have to do it in three dimensions. We start by fetching the input and having a quick look at it before importing our advent of code module and using interact to pull in the lines. Exactly as we've done before, we can map over a map of equals equals hash to get back a list of list of booleans that represents our grid. The puzzle states that we have an infinitely large three-dimensional grid. However, the Conway rules aren't going to let us expand more than one unit per turn in each direction. Let's write a function that's going to expand each row by 6. Well, by the number of turns that we have. Let's call that n. So we add n false values to either side of our row, which we'll call x. That will be a parameter to expand. Then we can map expand over all of our values to get back an expanded list. However, it's only expanded in the rows. We still have to expand the columns. Let's call our starting state start, and we can set that to the expanded list. To expand the columns, we can use a generalized version of our expand function. Let's call that expand with, and the first parameter is going to be the value that we're going to use to expand with. So we call that x and the value we're expanding y. So we should update our call to expand for the rows. And we need to also use expand with on the columns. But this time we expand with a blank row, which will be a number of false values. The length will be two lots of how much we're expanding by n plus the length of the original list. The output is a bit hard to read, and it's only going to get bigger, so I'm going to write a small little function called showmap, which is going to print out our grid in a nicer form. It will use bool to output a dot when we have a false value, and a hash when we have a true value we do a nested map to make sure that we are doing that on every cell. This gives us back a list of list of characters, which is a list of strings. And we can use unlines on that to give us back a single string with carriage returns between the lines. Bool is defined in data.bool, so we need to import that. Let's run showmap on our starting state to see how that looks. We're going to make this three-dimensional by adding six blank planes above and below our starting plane. We can do this exactly as we did for the blank row. And we start with introducing a blank plane. Then we can expand with the blank plane our existing plane. Let's have a quick look at that. And that looks exactly as I'd expect. Now, I'm thinking about using the map neighbors function that we wrote before and lives in our advent of code module. However, it only works for two dimensions, so we're going to have to change it a bit. So let's grab that code and pop it into our module. We need to add a dimension to this, so we need to add an extra IMAP on the outside of the two IMAPs we already have there. The lambda we pass to it will take as parameters the z-index and its corresponding plane, which is then passed on to the next imap. The modify function no longer expands out the tuple, so we don't have to change that. 
but the get function will have to deal with the extra dimension. Looking up z0 plus z in our map will give us back the plane pertaining to the value we're trying to get. We can look up the row from that plane and then the cell from that row like we did before. We haven't yet imported the data.vector module, so let's do that now. In case you haven't been following the whole series, this map neighbors function comes from day 11, and in day 12 we improved it by adding a num instance for tuples. The first parameter of map neighbors is the list of neighbors that we're interested in. We're going to actually generate this using a list comprehension this time. The neighbors are those with offsets of minus one to one in each of the dimensions. But we have to remember to exclude 0, 0, 0 itself. We can do that in the list comprehension with a guard like this. To get a specific map 26 neighbors function, we just call map neighbors 3 with neighbors 26 as its only parameter. Now the Conway function is actually one that I've used in this example in our advent of code module. So we can just grab that code from there and reuse it in our module. I've boiled the rule down to counting the number of alive neighbors. If that's three, it doesn't matter if the cell is dead or alive, it will be alive in the next step. However, if it's alive, and the number of alive neighbors is two, then it stays alive. In all other conditions, it's dead in the next step. So let's try and run through a single step of the Conway rule using our map 26 neighbors function. We're getting an error actually because our map 26 neighbors function is expecting a vector of vector of vectors and we actually have a list of list of lists. In our advent of code module, we already have functions to convert vectors of vectors into lists of lists and vice versa. So let's borrow from those and adapt them to use with three-dimensional data. These two-dimensional functions added an extra dimension to the L to V and V to L functions. And we can do the same trick to add a dimension to those functions to get three-dimensional ones. We should be able to convert easily to and from these types now, and then we can see the output of a single step of the Conway rule. And it somehow looks like a bear waving at us. And this looks like it should be symmetrical as well, of course. But let's leave that optimization for later and think about how we're going to count the number of active cells. We already have a function that can count an element in a list, but we need to then map that over a list of lists and then sum those counts together. We start with our count function, which counts the active cells in a list. We can then map that over the rows and sum those counts together to be able to count in a plane all of the active cells. We can then map that function over all of the planes and then sum those counts together to get the count for our whole three-dimensional space. So did you spot the error? Yeah, I forgot to put the original count function in parentheses. So that gives us the count after one iteration of Conway. We could just use copy and paste to do this six times, but let's be a bit nicer and write an apply n function that will perform this step n times. We can simply fold function composition over a list of n of our functions in order to achieve this. We actually don't need the f parameter because we can use composition in the middle here to avoid it. And so we should be ready to check our answer. And indeed it gets us a gold star. Now part two just asks us to add an extra dimension. So I think that should be quite straightforward. 
we can add a fourth dimension to our map neighbors function in the same way that we added a third dimension earlier. Let's call our fourth dimensional index w, even though it's not quite in order. And then we imap over every cube under that. The get function will then have to use the w values to pull out the correct cube from our grid. The plane is then selected from that cube. OK, so now we're going to have to get the 80 neighbors. And that should be as easy as just adding an extra dimension to this list comprehension. I'll then make the map26 neighbors function into a map80 neighbors function. We can create four dimensional conversion functions in the same way that we created the three dimensional ones. Finally, we update the f function by first changing the function calls to their four dimensional counterparts. We can then update the count active function by adding in the extra sum and map, and then expand our starting cube into a hypercube by putting blank cubes at each end. A blank cube is obviously just a bunch of blank planes. This should then hopefully give us the right answer. Let's check it. And indeed it does, and we have our second gold star. So until next time everyone, happy Haskelling!